Open EMS is a finite difference. You can, yeah, sure. Open EMS is a finite difference time domain solver uh, for 3D electromagnetic fields. So you might be asking, why do you need an electromagnetic field solver? Uh, high speed digital is becoming a thing where you need that that you need a field solver for, unlike the antennas and uh, filters and such that you might have used in the past. It's free open source software, uh, GPL3. There is no GUI for the uh, for generating your model and your ports and your mesh and all of that. So it uses MATLAB, MATLAB or Octave scripts to describe your geometry and all of that. There is, however, a viewer that you can, you can preview your geometry. This is a, a model of a, a via through a four-layer board going from top layer to an inner layer. On the right, we have the uh, results of that simulation. These are S parameters. So dB of S21 is our transmission, the signal that came out of port 2 went in port 1. dB of S11 is our reflection, the signal that went in port 1 came back out port 1. So pi open EMS, this is my wrapper for open EMS that generates, that simultaneously generates what open EMS needs to do the simulation while also generating a KiCad uh, footprint of the same geometry. It was originally just a wrapper that generated a MATLAB or Octave script. Uh, recently, the developers of OpenEMS have added uh, Python support. So thing has been, it's been simplified. There's no longer any MATLAB generation. As I said, it generates a KiCad module. Not all the geometry that uh, OpenEMS supports can be supported in KiCad. So planar structures and vias are the main things you're going to, to bring in. Of course, your dielectric stack up of your board, too, would be part of that. It also adds some helper functions and classes for geometries like a via. You've got the barrel, and then you've got, like in a four-layer board, you've got four, uh, four pads. So the, those five cylinders, as they would be modeled in OpenEMS, are, are generated with one command. Also, planes with holes, as, as frequently will need, be needed in, uh, in signal integrity work. Digital continues to get so much faster. Like PCIe Gen 4 at 16 gigabit per second is coming. You can't just put a via with your through your differential pair and hope for the best. So you'll need any, any layer transition you'll need to model in the future. I've actually had a consulting client who, who was doing PCIG, PCIe Gen 3 design and was having some packet errors. And I helped them out with simulating some of their, their connector interfaces and vias and such and was able to eliminate the packet errors there. Like I said, it's being simplified to eliminate all of the MATLAB stuff. So hopefully becoming just a very thin wrapper over OpenEMS that adds the PCB export. Primarily created as a tool for generating uh, boards at Harman Instruments, but I am working on documenting so it will be use useful for, to others. It's currently uh, public on GitHub. I'll, there's a link at the end, along with all these examples that I'm showing. So I'm going to go through the process of this, low pass, these, this pair of low-pass filters. The upper one is a 7.5 gigahertz low-pass. The lower one is a 15 gigahertz low-pass. Bo both are 13th order. And you, you can see the, the connectors there on the ends where, where we measured it. So this is a lumped element prototype of the filter in quite universal circuit simulator, which is another great piece of free open source software useful for RF and microwave design, even high-speed digital like a like I've said. So you can see as, as, as lumped elements, we have some tiny part values, 216 femtofarads. <laughs> Turns out you can buy from DigiKey a 220 femtofarad capacitor, but it's got a plus or minus 50 femtofarad tolerance. 
And then we've also got huge parasitics just in the pads and all the interconnect. So we want to, we want to create this circuit without the parts, just PCB, uh, polygons and cutouts and such as that. So no parts, just circuit boards and traces. Distributed element filters can also be implemented without a PCB, just as, say, machined metal. But that's not the, not the focus here. So for material, for this particular design, we want something going to, we're going to have some ground cutouts and we want something thin. So we're going with the Oshpark Flex, just something we can prototype economically in small quantities. So it's a four mil poly image substrate with uh, 35 micrometers, one ounce copper on both sides. Uh, the the uh, relative permittivity is 3.2, which is the relevant thing we need to know about it to enter it in the EM field solver. Uh, dissipation factors nice and low. Uh, we are going to keep the, the mask on over the filter because of the electroless nickel immersion gold. So we'll we'll model the mask as well. The reason we don't want the enig or on there is the nickel is magnetic and lossy, and the gold over it is so thin that the, the current would be carried by the nickel. A slight moisture absorption with it that it will, can shift properties. Just something to be aware of. It does not seem to be a big deal. The code shown below is just the Pi Open EMS code to initialize those materials. Uh, for our capacitors, normally in a stepped impedance low pass, like you might have seen in the past, there would be a rectangle of, a, of basically a wide section of transmission line for the capacitors. But that, your input and output are two different spots, so you've got a delay. So we, we prefer to avoid that. So we use this dual radial stub approach. You might see it referred to as a bow tie or a butterfly in like an IEEE paper on some of these filters. The inter entrance and exit point is very, are very near to each other, so we don't have that time delay. And again, the choice of thin substrate reduces the area required, just parallel plate capacitance. Inductors. So again, in a, in a stepped impedance low pass, normally you, do, you use a very thin line for your inductor. Well, in this case, on the thin Oshpark Flex, the design rule minimum trace is about 60 ohms, which is no good. We want a few hundred ohms. So we cut the ground out underneath it, as you, you can see here and here. That brings the impedance up to about 200 ohms. Just the fact that it, it increased the inductance per unit length and it decreased the capacitance per unit length. So in OpenEMS, we have a simulation box. By default, all the boundaries are perfect electrical conductor, which is essentially lossless metal. There are many other boundaries available. Uh, PMC, which is useful for symmetry, which is perfect magnetic conductor, doesn't exist in nature really. And perfect magnetic, or perfectly matched layer, which is an absorptive boundary, like if you wanted to simulate it being open to the air. Uh, worth looking at the OpenEMS documentation on that. There are many boundaries, many things to read about there. The unused space in our model is vacuum, which is close enough to air for our purposes. So we've got, we have some air space above and below our filter. Best to break a problem up into pieces, simulating an entire board it probably would take too long. So ports, this is where our signal enters and exits. You can see this little brown thing here is our, is our port. Uh, this is using the lumped element port in OpenEMS, which might not be the best option, but it is the, it's the fastest. There, there are numerous other types of ports, coax ports, micro MSL ports, waveguide ports, so on and so forth. Uh, meshing. So we have to mesh this thing to, to, to simulate it. Mesh does not have to be uniform. As you can see back in this slide, we have a 500 micrometer uh, Z, Z height on, on these mesh cells up in the air where where the fields aren't so strong, but down here in the substrate, we have a 25 micrometer mesh cell. 
So having fewer mesh cells up where it doesn't matter gets us faster simulation time. Uh, you can see there's quite a variation in runtime versus mesh size. 15 micrometer maximum cell size over two hours. 100 micrometer maximum mesh size with a 500 micrometer in Z gives us 21 seconds, but you lose some accuracy. So how much accuracy do you lose? Well, this blue trace, the outlier, is the 100 micrometer cell. So that's not good enough. But all the rest of them are nearly right on top of each other. So as you're, as you're bringing your design in to be closer to what you need, you, you can use a coarser mesh and, and then bring it down to, to verify what you've got what you want. OK, key, now let's look at the KeyCAD footprint that was generated for this. Switch over to the footprint editor and it'll be a little easier to show you the pieces, how this worked out. So that that I just moved is our ground plane, which is a custom shaped pad. So that, that new feature in, in recent versions of KiCad was very helpful there. Since we don't have uh, we don't have cutouts in our footprint, just two of these overlapped gave us what we need. We have to include a polygon pour keep out so our ground plane doesn't pour over this. And the filter would not be effective if that was the case. This piece in the middle is just a polygon. And so it effectively forms a net tie between our two pads. You can see it's just a polygon. And then we have our input and output ports, which are just regular pads. So it's footprint, no part goes on it, and it, it implements our filter. So it makes it very easy to do just to, to tell KiCad to update the footprint when we, when we make a change. So our results. So I had Oshpark fabricate three of these and measured them on the VNA with a calibration, TRL calibration in microstrip. And we got a, an excellent match for between the fabricated part and the simulated model. Uh, I think I failed to mention it when we were talking about materials, but we did lossless, did not include metal loss. So there is some loss in the physical filter that's not in the model. That's what you can see here. All of this is within measurement and uncertainty on the VNA. So there's a transmission of the same filter. This original was reflection. So we want the, the low pass reflects everything in the stop band and passes everything in the, in the pass band. So again, we can see our little bit of loss. Zoom in. We can, we can see we've got about 1.5 dB at our 7.5 7 gigahertz maximum frequency we plan to pass through this filter. And the 15 gigahertz filter, very similar story. Uh, performed very well. And this, this, was, this was the first revision. So that's a, that's a big plus of simulation. A couple more examples. This is a 2.92 millimeter compression mount uh, connector used on this breakout board for a USB-C connector. So this, this is the model here, vias, clearances in the ground planes. Underside, you can see here, the 2.92 millimeter connector has an air dielectric coax for the, the PCB side. So that, that is modeled here, and the PCB is right on top of it. That gets simulated and was, was able to optimize that connector transition. Connector transitions are a real challenge if, at these frequencies. This is an interdigital bandpass filter that's used in the Harman Instrument signal generator, used to clean up a, the output of a, a frequency doubler generating 4 gigahertz. So just another very convenient way to, way to uh, way to generate a footprint for this filter. And there's another, this is also in the examples in the Git repository, Wilkinson splitter. 
folded to make it compact with a, a little bit of cost of performance, but that was, again, pretty simple. To Future work, it needs more documentation, so it'll be more accessible to other people. And also adding many models from a private repository that there's no reason to keep secret. All right, so how are we doing on time? All right, so I have a live demo of, of a mitered bend. This is not as complete as I'd hoped it would be. I ran into a few issues while my plan was to write this on the airplane on the way here, and it didn't go as well as I'd hoped. But anyway, you'll be able to see kind of the flow. So this is setting up the class for PyOpen EMS all our boundaries and frequencies and such as that, maximum resolution, our materials, some calculations for our z-axis. This is a bug I ran into. Anyway, I'm working around it, so ignore that. We can manually add some mesh lines where needed, and I've done that here to, to create the top of the, the, the box. Uh, Open EMS will do mesh smoothing for you, and it has a function called detect edges that it, it can create a mesh for you. And sometimes it's better to give it some help. So more calculations in X and Y. We add a, a box, which is our substrate. This is the same Oshpark Flex. So that covers our enti the entire XY plane of our simulation box. We have a, an array of points, which is our polygon for the mitered bend. And then we take that array of points and give it to the, the PyOpen EMS polygon function. We also tell it PCB layers f.cu. That's, that's telling it this goes in the PCB and put it on this layer. And we add two ports. Again, they have pad names, which are go into KiCad and become, become the ports, the, uh, not ports, the pads there for the connections. And we tell it write KiCad and run open, open, run open EMS. So we can do view. And see our model. Uh, there is a bug in this version of KiCad. The render doesn't look very good, so I'll turn that off. We can see our mitered bend and our ports. Close that, and now we can tell it to solve. It takes a little while. This one's a small model, so it's pretty quick. And I have not optimized it, and I'm not 100% certain on a few of the other settings. But you can see we have S parameters for our mitered bend now. All right, and I have some links at the end here for, for the, the software used. And the, the, this PyOpen EMS is the repository where, you, where you'll find these examples. Uh, that is the URL for the Open EMS project, which is very good. That their documentation is on meshing and all of that is something you'll need to refer to if you choose to use it. Uh, ATLC I did not use in this, in this but it's, another, it's a transmission line solver that is useful. And QECS is the one I used to generate that lumped element filter, which is, was the prototype. That's it. <laughs>